Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, some exciting news about switchblades in Virginia. Ostop Hell's new knife, and we take a look at great knives, fixed blade knives, before your EDC bag. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. All of the comments were pretty much awesome this week, uh, but my favorite was from John's Life, and it was on the short that I posted a few weeks back about five intimidating Bowies. Uh, just a good excuse to show off some of my favorites. And he says, got a beat to hell, but nearly unsharpened guard stamped W49 for 40 bucks with luck on eBay. Now, this is the W49. It's a classic, amazing Bowie. He got it for 40 bucks on eBay. Thought I overpaid. Nope. Replaced the busted handle with black walnut and smoothed out the dings with a file. Can't have Asked for a better Bowie, takes an edge like a straight razor and holds it for ages. And the steel is carbon steel, but with some rust resistant properties. So what I like about this, uh, I like a couple of things about this uh, comment. First of all, it made me reflect on my own W49, uh, which my brother bought at a pawn shop. And it's obviously been uh, with this anonymous bone handle and alternate uh, changes made to the guard. Uh, it has been customized. It was customized for the use of whoever the tough guy was who carried this knife. I just like seeing this because this guy did the same thing. Uh, uh, John's life did the same thing with the black walnut and, and getting resuscitating the life back into an old W49. And as we go through this uh, crazy <clears throat> explosion of knife availability and knife models and everything out there, um, you know, we come back to this topic every once in a while, peak knife. Have we reached, is it oversaturated? And of course, I always come down on the side of, no, we could always use more knives. But um, the fact that, that John's life dug back into history and got himself an older knife uh, in the W49 and then brought it back to life just goes to show that, you know, and I'm victim of this too, um, but we just kind of keep consuming and acquiring newer and newer knives because they're exciting and they're cool and they're fun to use and fun to play with. But we shan't forget that these things last way longer than our flesh bags do. And, uh, you know, even even the cheapest knife among our collections will last outlast us. So it's good to put some value in some of these nicer, older knives, bring them back, use them and don't just keep moving forward without uh, keeping your eye on the past and in what was important then. And the W49 is an important blade. And uh, well, I just like the fact that we can have these things and kind of uh, trace our own personal histories through our knives. So uh, take good care of your old knives. It, it is a cool project to go on, on eBay or, or um, blade forums and get, something old and see what you can do with it. See if you can give it new life. So John's life, congratulations on your W49. It's an awesome knife. And uh, I hope it gives you many, many years of great service. All that being said, all that philosophical waxing uh, leads us right to this uh, favorite part of the show, which is what I'm carrying. Let's have a pocket check. So today I was carrying one that I haven't carried in quite a while, and that's my <laughs> left hand, TRM Atom, um, the great and sort of ubiquitous knife from TRM, the, the Atom and the Neuron. The Neuron is the smaller version of this knife. But these, these were the knives that put TRM on the map because they are all made up in Massachusetts from American-made materials. They are thin packages overall, easy to carry extremely thin and slicey utilitarian blade uh, and style out out the wazoo. God, I'm sorry I said that. Just style for days. And the cool thing about this knife has always been uh, that you can replace the scales without disassembling the whole damn knife. You can just pop those two little screws and that pivot does not capture the scale at all. You just take those screws out, 
lift off the scales, put new scales on. I have uh, four pairs of scales from these uh, for this knife. And it's like having four knives in one. And I really love that aspect about this. Uh, ben Peterson of NAFS uh, obviously liked it too because that's a feature he has put on his knives. And um, But besides that, besides the cosmetics, um, it's just a great feeling knife. It feels great in hand. Uh, the action is that luscious, uh, sort of hydraulic and smooth uh, washer action that I love um, just as much as that smooth drop shut ball bearing uh, action that you find in, in many modern knives. And it just has charm and usefulness all day long. So there we go. That is the TRM Atom in my front pocket. I had a, I had a, uh, this one I like to talk about because it was DLC coded and it's a factory second, but it's just such a tiny little blemish uh, in the coding that they, they offered this as a second. And uh, uh, Marianne from over there uh, sent me this knife with the, um, with those scales. Those are uh, GL Hansen and Sun scales. Very, very nice knife. Love it. All right. Next up uh, in my other pocket, my front left pocket for um, my traditional carry today was the Javelina Jack. No surprise. Uh, I am frequently carrying the knife of the month from Jack Wolf, uh, so I can fully appreciate it. That's what's great about this monthly schedule of Jack Wolf knives. Um, the way they release them every month, you get to acquire them. Me, uh, Ben, it, I'm a lucky guy. Ben sends me them, but I get to carry one for a full month and really get to know it. Um, and well, I've been really enjoying the process. A beautiful knife with that great sow belly, um, unobscured by a secondary blade, sow belly ergonomics, and that beautiful upswept clip point, uh, full height S90V, full height hollow grind S90V blade. Uh, it's just an amazing knife, as are all of the Jack Wolf knives. And um, this one in particular, I'm very fond of because I've always loved sow bellies, and I only have one, and it's a trapper with that extra spay blade in there. So it's not as comfortable as this. Great knife. Uh, uh, thirdly, in the waistband, this will be no surprise. I can't kick it out of my waistband. This is the Nova One by uh, Hogtooth Knives and uh, my blade design. Uh, a collaboration of epic proportions, if I do say so myself. Uh, this knife is inspired by the Tonto, EDC Tonto, that Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives uh, produces as one of his regular uh, EDC fixed blades. I loved it so much, I wanted to make a Bowie blade, and he agreed, and so we, the collaboration of the Nova series has begun. And I say series because if this is a success, this Nova 1, we will have a Nova 2, and that will feature a different blade shape and a different color micarta handle. Um, this is 154 cm hollow ground, very thinly and sharply. Uh, that giant knife, uh, junky logo will be uh, shrunk down to fit in the flat there, and then of course, uh, you'll have a serial number. I love this knife. Uh, I, I, you know, it, it doesn't count for me to say I love it, and I think it's uh, beautiful because you know, obviously, I do. I designed that blade, and I loved, I love the knife in general, and uh. Trust me when I say it is awesome. Um, but then again, it's like saying, hey, my kids are the best. Sure you're the, sure they are. Uh, that pre-order is open, and uh, you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash Nova1. And just a little side note, Nova1, uh, Nova stands for Northern Virginia, a very unpermissive place uh, when it comes to everything fun. So uh, I just wanted to put that uh, in the name so that it would be a little commemoration of uh, where we live. Okay, and then last up in my pocket for um, uh, emotional support, you've seen me flipping it, I'm getting emotional support still, uh, the uh, Ritter Hogue Mini RSK Mark I. Um, this is just such a great knife, and Hogue Knives has really taken this design, which was formerly the Ritter Griptilian, as you know, and really brought it up a notch with extending the handle ever so slightly, making it a little bit easier to hold, uh, maintaining that amazing 20 CV blade steel. That was always the goal of Doug Ritter with his uh, Ritter Griptilian and now Mini uh, and RSK Mark I was to have a really high end uh, utilitarian blade, high end meaning the blade steel is high end, and putting it on a handle that is more. Uh, 
you know, more economical uh, so that you could have a great, <clears throat> excuse me, great performing knife uh, that is not going to break the bank. Um, I'm going to put this in front of the main camera to show you this. Uh, by the way, they just did the axis lock right with their able lock. Now everyone's making their own version of the axis lock, but I still think of what I've tried out there. Hogue has done it best. But, you know, in fairness, uh, the technology is not that complicated. So, you know, other companies are nailing it. But I have found that this Hogue, man, it really does bring out the fidgetiness uh, in me. So um, this is what I had on me for emotional support today. I, I do must say I did change the clip. I hate Hogue. Hate. Strong word. I dislike Hogue clips. Um, so I got myself the um, a replacement clip for the... Um, bug out and put it on there uh, pretty giant screws there i must say digging up there into the into the well but hey man that's a first world problem all right so this is what i had on me today i had the trm adam i had the javelina jack by jack wolf knives i had the nova one and i had the mini rsk mark one from doug ritter and hogue knives what did you have on you let me know i know you can't speak to me right now but you can comment below and let me know what you're carrying i love the inspiration uh please hook that up okay next i want to show you something uh, that if you saw thursday night knives uh this past week uh last week you saw um i'm very excited about this um my buddy ian had a hot has a hawks hellion from tops that he used so much he used to do a lot of camping and survival stuff and uh, the knife was really, really beaten up. So uh, he asked me to sharpen it. I brought it home. I'm like, sure, I can do this. And it was such a mess. I decided, why not try out Topps's refurbishing service? So I went on their website. And you would be shocked if you haven't looked at all the different coatings you can, all the different things you can have done to your Topps knives, uh, your Topps knife, basically. Send it to them. They'll strip it. They'll, it doesn't have to be old and beaten either. They'll strip it and they'll recode it with one of a big number of finishes. I think the only thing they don't do is the acid rain finish because that's dependent on a differential heat treat. So they're not going to reheat treat your blade, but uh, all different kind of coatings. So with this one, uh, I went from a really nasty beaten up here. I haven't even removed the grease from this. I feel like that's that's for Ian to do. But uh, we went from a uh, that black traction coating that is very textured to this very smooth Cerakote. And um, they re-etched the, the uh, Hawks Hellion. You know, they re-etched uh, all of the markings on the blade. They sharpened it. This thing, yes, it is a sharpened pry bar, but it is wickedly keen. Um, it's not necessarily an apple slicer, but they sharpen uh, this edge, this edge, it's like a quad edge here. One here, one here, one here, one here. This, this Tonto is like a little spear point. And then you've got a run on the top before you get to the resharpened notching saw back. This thing is incredible. Uh, it was also missing the hardware. I'm not even quite sure how the handle scales were staying on. I think they were staying on, uh, with these two grommets here for, uh, lashing points. Uh, but these two screws were gone. They put those in there. I, I haven't taken, this is also, this plastic is for Ian to take off. Um, but they totally hooked this knife up. Uh, it is like a brand new knife. If you saw the quick video I did of it when I received it, I kept going back. For, is this, is this new? Did they send a new knife? So they did such a fantastic job. Also, I ordered a new sheath for him and, uh, the new ones, uh, not crazy about these nylon sheaths, but the new one comes with, two pockets so you can put a little knife in there and uh, survival tools and stuff in your in your um, sheath here so great job from tops in their refurbishing service i couldn't recommend it more highly this is the first time i've ever done anything like this uh, i've seen a lot of videos in the past people um reviewing warranty services from some of our favorite companies and i always thought that was interesting but never really had much of a, a reason to do it myself so i was excited to send this into tops and see that not only do they make great knives and uh, have so many models on offer all the time, but they stand behind their product and they did a beautiful job of refurbishing. All right, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at some uh, knife life news, and then we will get to the state of the collection right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. 
through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. I'm glad Jim muted me on that last uh, on that last little uh, liner there because all the knives they showed were gorgeous and I found myself in, oh 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 so uh, glad you didn't hear that uh, but I guess I just let you hear it so anyway uh, next from Best Tech this is pretty exciting this is the fourth knife in Ostop Hell's uh, bouquet series knives that are um, designed after or inspired by flowers and um, the last one was the Strillet. Uh, that cool uh, push dagger style uh, uh, knife. I really want to get one of those. I keep saying it, but I just got to get off the pot. Um, so the new one is called the Be High. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, but look at this beauty. And Best Tech just reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check one out. And I said, uh, yes, please. Uh, look at this thing. It is beautiful. So this is a Hawkbill liner lock. The original um, article on this on Knife News, they made uh, an error said it was a slip joint, but this is a liner lock 14 C 28 N that's a 2.15 inch blade. And it's styled after the leaves of the red Palulu, uh, a flower slash plant that I have never seen, uh, until I looked it up and, uh, yeah, that the blade, you can see where, how the blade was inspired from that. And you can also see how useful that blade shape is. Uh, I look at it and initially, uh, you know, immediately, I think, wow, that's aggressive. That'd be a great little tech. But this is, uh, as Ostop Hell mentions, a number of his friends have been using it for gardening. Uh, you, that little hawkbill blade, perfect for opening up mulch bags and, and that kind of thing. And then also pruning. We see pruning blades are, uh, are hawkbilled. Uh, so this is not just a great little EDC Uh it's going to be something that you can use in the garden. And, and that's very apropos the name and the, and the whole um, bouquet series, which I think is cool. Uh, one little interesting thing about this knife is that there was no room on the blade with those uh, grinds. And there's very little flat on that with that big opening hole. So this is the first time that Best Tech has used the pivot as the logo spot. And I love it. I, I'm a big fan of, of putting the logo on the pivot and leaving the blade um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, neutral. I know you're all yelling at your screen right now. What What's the word we use when there's nothing, no billboarding on the blade? Uh, so I, I'm loving how this looks. Uh, exciting. And I can't wait to receive mine. You'll see a, a little video on that here, no doubt. Okay, next up. From one of my favorite custom knife uh, makers. I love this guy's designs. I've never actually held one of his knives. Um, but, and he was on... Uh, Episode 28, he was on one of the very early uh, uh, Knife Junkie podcasts, but that's Tough Knives, uh, collaboration with Civivi. Jeff Blauvelt of Tough Knives uh, has, this is his second Civivi collaboration. The first one um, was, was a little flipper, and then this one, oh man, this makes my mouth water. I hate to sound gross about it, but this thing is so beautiful. And it's exciting because I remember a few years back, you know, I follow him him on Instagram, and a few years back, he made a knife just like this. It was kind of a one-off fixed blade, and uh, it was kind of outside of what he was doing. Uh, you know, he's primarily a folder maker. And then he made some steak knives that emulated this, but were more slender. And I, I just thought, my God, if I could afford that Tonto, that beautiful, oddly shaped uh, Tonto, I would go for it. Well, now... Being with Civivi, it is well within my reach, and I'm very excited about this. 4.8 inches of D2 on this very oddly, not oddly, I'm not going to say this, uniquely shaped, uh, very bellied Tonto. G10 handle scales. Uh, based on that custom from a few years back, the one thing I mentioned this uh, uh, in passing, that puño, or the, the uh, pommel there, is a little pointy for my for my taste, it, it doesn't need to have a lanyard hole at all. And I don't like those big goofy lanyards they send, those fob, that's a fob basically. Um, but it's nice that they added, I guess it's value added. I just don't like it. And and also I don't like that pointiness in the pommel because I always like to have my thumb there if I'm holding it in reverse grip. All that being said, 
you know, I'm not getting in too many knife fights these days, so I probably don't have to worry about that too much. That is not going to stop me. That is not a deal breaker. I am snapping up this knife as soon as it is available. It is not quite available yet. It is going to come in a Kydex sheath with a Techlock style attachment. Looking forward to that for sure. All right, next up, very exciting news from my home state and Jim's home state, Virginia. Virginia House Bill 2298 will remove switchblades from the list of weapons that cannot be concealed carried. This is very exciting to me because uh, less than a year ago, July 1st, uh, switchblades, that's automatic knives out the fronts, out the sides, were finally made legal in the state of Virginia uh, with our new well, he's not so new now, but with Governor Yunkin coming in, uh, lots of things uh, changed, and that was one of them, uh, thanks to knife rights, of course. And um, so it has passed the state House and Senate, and it's going to him for his signature. Now, hopefully he's not so busy that he can't sign it by March 27th, because uh, that's when this House Bill 2298 will expire if not signed. So very excited about this, and just a big thanks, as always, to Doug Ritter and knife rights. Without them, this would not be happening. Like much of our knife thing would not be happening. Uh, next up is also news related to knife uh, knife rights. I got this from their site. Uh, Amazon Smile will no longer be giving. Now, Amazon Smile is a program um, that uh, donates some of the money from certain purchases to 501c3s that are uh, you know nonprofit 501c3 organizations uh, whose products fit the bill. So they're they're getting rid of that. I'm just going to read from uh, from the article here because it says it perfectly. On February 20th, Amazon is ending its Amazon Smile Donations program for nonprofits. That has been a very successful program for the Knife Rights Foundation. Doing so will likely save Amazon millions and perhaps as important. This is important right here. Allow them to donate to programs they prefer and for which donations they can gain more publicity for themselves and their preferred causes. It no doubt annoyed them to no end to fund numerous 501c3 organizations, which were anathema to their woke culture. <clears throat> and if I'm to uh, editorialize here, I would say that woke culture is the single most destructive social contagion to hit our shores like ever. So I, I can I can bet that has a lot to do with why this is going away. Now, uh, when they announced that they were going away, they uh, also said as a parting gift or as a parting gesture, we will uh, give you a quarter's worth of your uh, 2022, you know, averaging out what each quarter yielded from this SMILE program over 2022 and giving that amount uh, to these 501c3s. But, <clears throat> you know, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, Amazon SMILE, no longer giving. Knife rights, no longer benefiting. All right. So coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at uh, a really cool knife that is not mine yet, though I will get on this pre-order when it's open. And then we're going to take a look at uh, great fixed blade knives for your EDC bag. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at the knifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Yes, you are looking at a folding Pical style knife. This one is from Justin of Tier 1 Gear Reviews. If you don't know Justin of Tier 1 Gear Reviews, you got to go to his channel on YouTube. He features some really awesome knives. And in the past, he has sent me some great knives to check out. And this is the one that I have now from him. So you remember a few year, a few months back, I had his scythe um, fixed blade knives, one in a leather sheath, one in a kydex sheath, beautifully made, uh, custom 
versions of his design, the scythe, a Pical style knife that looks very similar to this one. Well, recognizing a, uh, a hole in the market for folding Pical style knives, Justin set about set out to make one that is affordable and uh, you know within reach to more people because the only folding pecals out there right now are like say the two hundred dollar um, uh, no what's it called um, the inversion from Kaiser and Dirk Pinkerton or the Elvia from um, Emerson you know those are pricey knives and uh, if you wanted a s small stash away pecal style knife for um, you know, secondary use, utility, primary use protection, uh, you would have to fork out some some cash. Well, Justin has hit it out of the park with this. This is going to retail for 70 to $80. This prototype, <clears throat> excuse me, is made by Shielden Knives, who, I, man, I got to say, they have knocked it out of the park with this particular OEM project. I've uh, held and used uh, some Shielden Knives, and they're nice, you know, especially for the price. But this man, this is a different level. It, you've got some polished, uh, it looks like paper micarta or rich light. Uh, you have the shield and logo there, but you have a 154 cm blade that is just beautifully shaped and and has just the right angle out of the hand for um, for gross motor use. Um, a Pical style knife is is uh, meant to be held. I'm going to go to this wide camera here. Meant to be held in the hand like this. And uh, and to take advantage of those arcing motions of your elbow and shoulder um, when you're in caveman mode, uh, if you if your adrenaline is up and you're being attacked and you are not like the most trained, calm head out there, you might do what most people do and go into caveman mode. This accelerates at caveman mode because like a cat's claw or a well. Uh, an eagle's talon it does this motion uh it has the sharp point facing inward so that it grabs and then it has the sharp edge uh, inward so that it rips and cuts and uh that really maximizes this sort of ah get off of me kind of thing uh so sorry you had to see that uh so tier one justin did a fantastic job doing what he set out to do which is designing uh, a, a within reach self protection knife plus it's small this thing is small they're going to do an XL2 but uh it fits my hand perfectly uh there's no exposed handle to leverage out you know to disarm with it is just all business um coming out of the palm there uh, 154cm if I didn't mention it and stonewash just a beautiful thing Justin nicely done uh, it'd be cool to see some sort of a wave feature on this that is one thing about uh karambits and pical style knives that um are kind of a prerequisite at this point because uh flipping it open and then getting it into the right grip um might be difficult in a pinch uh but if you have it out and you're prepared uh, that's that's something else but uh yeah karambits especially i feel need that wave because you also have to feed your finger through that hole uh once it's open as well so um something to consider oh one thing i do have to mention he is going to put a wire clip on there all right uh coming up let's take a look at great fixed blade knives for your edc bag now this was inspired by my EDC bag audit, uh, which is going on right now. I think I might videotape it, but I just have so much crap in my EDC backpack. It started as a, a light day pack for going to and from work with some essentials and has really turned into a full on like survival bag with with uh, with all the other stuff. My calendar. Uh, yes, I use a paper calendar to organize certain things and, and my binder and all this other crap in there. And uh, and the knives, so many knives in my bag. I'm like, I don't need all these knives. I have two assigned knives, three assigned knives for my bag, a Swiss Army knife, a locking folder, and a fixed blade. Uh, so I wanted to take a look at, the, at what are ideal fixed blades for this. Uh, two runners up on the extreme ends. You know, you have all the strength in the world. You can carry something heavy, or maybe this is uh, a bag that's going to, you know, not be on, you're not going to be carrying too much uh, and you can afford the weight. Uh, I love this thing. This is the Bone Daddy Bladeworks Axis. Uh, I did a show on this one, or I did a video on this one 
we also interviewed uh, the the um, the maker. But this is a knife slash axe. You have all these different grips to use uh, these very sharp D2 edges here and uh, to to use as a knife. Uh, but then it's also built to be hafted uh, with a stick. So you can um, take this knife like this here. Let me come over here so you can see. And um, hold it like this using this little trigger and chop down a sapling. I did that. Actually, you want to use gloves, I found out. <laughs> but chop down a sapling with this and then carve it so that and split it down the middle, and then you can haft it like that. And then you take paracord, which they supply, and uh, wrap it on there, and then you have an axe. This thing is really cool because it reminds me of an ancient tool. It reminds me of a, a very ancient tool, like the first knife, you know, the, a napped piece of flint uh, that, that gets used for all sorts of different purposes. So I love this Bone Daddy Bladeworks axis. And uh, so if, you, if weight is no issue, um, this might be something you'd want to put in your uh, bag for any contingency. Now, on the opposite end of that, you have absolutely zero space or weight to spare. Um, you might consider this little honey and drop it in there. This is the um, Station 9 number 4. It is strictly a an OSS lapel dagger. This is a, a little protection device. Um, you put a little cord on there and you can wrap it, put your fingers in there so it doesn't slip around on you. And they have these uh, sort of uh, agricultural fields of jimping here uh, that that really make it stick in your hand. I When I first got this and I was talking a lot about it, I uh, I explained how I attacked a watermelon in the kitchen and, and just shivved it multiple times like it was a prison fight. And it went in and out so easily and never moved in my hand, never budged. Like I, my big concern was this little sharp thing could slide in my hand and like really mess up the fingers. But with a lanyard and with a tight grip on this um, jimping here, it just goes in and out like nothing. So if you need a little tiny fixed blade that you're going to drop in a little tiny bag, maybe maybe you're a woman, probably not, but maybe you're a woman and, and you want something very small to drop in your clutch. Maybe you're going out for the night. It's not even your purse, but it's a clutch. Men, that's a little purse that women can hold in their hands. Um, that, that might be an option, but neither of those make this list uh, because they're both very specialized. The rest of these are pretty much uh, universal, universally utilitarian, that is. Uh, first one up is the very affordable and beautiful uh, Senkut Sakshi. That's what I'm going with pronunciation wise. I think this is an incredibly handsome knife. I remember when it came out, I thought that that blade reminded me a lot of the um, Civivi Cogent, the first um, button lock from them, which had this very, very same, uh, very similar clip point blade. A little less of a curve on the spine, but basically the same knife. This was a gift to me from my brother-in-law this past Christmas. And uh, I was so excited because this was a knife I I wanted to get when it came out. But, you know, I, I have a long list. And, uh, you know, it was doubtful whether I was going to get to this one. And um, my brother-in-law got it. And I'm happy he did because it is really cool. I mean, I'm, I'm using my left hand and not as... Uh, comfortable with it, but these little speed holes allow you to change grip so easily uh, by sort of burying the tips of your fingers in and letting it slide around like that, uh, pivot around like that. Uh, but also they add grip for your fingers and they add lightness. And that overall, that neutral arcing handle is is just ideal. Uh, this is <clears throat> this is uh, 9CR, 18 MOV, and very thin and slicey. Uh, a great bag knife for sure. Uh, also a great sheath. That's a big part of this is the sheath here. If it does that, it's a good Kydex sheath. <laughs> Pops right off. Okay. <clears throat> Next up, I have the um, from Off Grid Knives. This is one you don't hear me talk about too much. This is the Cleaver version two. And this makes a great knife uh in the off-grid lineup, this is a great bag knife because um, a lot of their other fixed-blade knives are 
more robust and heavier. Let's just say that a lot of the, all of these knives on this list are pretty light. That's a big part of it. And, um, and compact. So this fits that bill uh, perfectly. You've got a Kydex sheath with the logo emblazoned. And then you have this really nice um, full bellied cleaver style blade, but still with a tip. It's got a workable tip uh, that you could use for, you know, most kind of tip cutting you need to do. Uh, it is rather wedge like. And um, in terms of off grid knives, their folders are so incredible ground so incredibly thin and slicey uh especially behind the edge i mean they really do get them very thin and sharp their fixed blade knives are more robust uh than that that being said even though it kind of looks like a wedge in cross section still a great and very slicey knife i think that this would actually make a great picnic knife uh cutting <laughs> i'm gonna say it cutting cheese with this would be um well, it is very, it's very nice cutting cheese with this because what happens when you cut down uh, on the cheese, it, it, it falls off this side of the blade because of that wedge shape, kind of like a Japanese chef's knife, sort of, uh, which are chisel ground. This is not chisel ground, but it has a similar effect. So uh, this does not live permanently in our picnic basket because you know, we haven't been on a picnic since our girls have been born, I think. But uh, it is... Uh, a, a great one just for the for the backpack, but I do think uh, I do think it'd be good for a uh, food knife in the travel. You know, you're you're going on a road trip. You got the cooler. Pop this in the cooler. Uh, this is Cryo D2. Um, I love D2 steel. Works great, and I recently found out the benefits of cryogenically heat treating. So I, I get it now. Finally, at long last. I know I'm a slow learner. Uh, that is the. Um, off-grid knives cleaver too. Next up, this is on the more tactical tip, if you will, and it's a design by A.G. Russell, a very famous design, made affordable by CRKT. This is the Sting Dagger. It is a single piece of drop-forged, what is this, steel? Uh, 10, sorry, 1050 high-carbon steel, hence the coating uh, to keep it from... <clears throat> rusting. Uh, as you can definitely tell, it is a small dagger. It's got a little bit of heft to it, but the size keeps the weight definitely within um, a reasonable uh, a reasonable range. Uh, you've got these divots in the handle for, for gription and indexing, and uh, you've got two sharp edges. This used to be our bathroom knife, uh, but the edge started to rust. Um, so I, I swapped that out. Uh, this one I keep a lanyard on because if I had to thrust with it, I'd rather, and I had time to prepare, I would rather have a lanyard around my wrist or around my, the back of my hand so that my hand doesn't slide up on the blade in a thrust. I used to train with a guy um, who rode a motorcycle and he used to carry this thing on his belt upside down, which I thought was interesting because uh, I always thought this, the retention of this was good uh, but not as tight as some other Kydex. Uh, but he said he never had issues. It never fell out, never lost it. Uh, and on the back of this nylon sheath, you have different lashing options. You can have it run it horizontally on the belt, uh, or it's got these little uh, loops here. You can uh, molly loop it on stuff. So a very cool little knife, the Sting. Check out the A.G. Russell version of it. It is a uh, it is uh, extra. It's got handle, cool handle materials, and uh, it's got a uh, a bolster and everything. It's pretty cool. Um, that is the sting. Okay, next up, also tactical, but this is this would make a very good utility knife as well. This is the K Bar TDI. Now the TDI series, there's a bunch of them with different blade shapes, but this is in this was meant to be an offside um, gun retention knife. What is a gun retention knife, you say? Well, say you're a police officer arresting a scumbag and he tries to grab your knife or your gun. Well, you have a knife on your off side that you can reach that has the same ergonomics as a gun and uh, or as a pistol, you know, a handgun. And that is what police officers are most used to training with this sort of form factor, whether it's their pistol or their taser. It's going to be it's going to have that pistol grip set up. 
So the idea for K-Bar was to make this knife so that it was uh, uh, ergonomically intuitive. And if someone's, you know, you're wrestling and someone's got uh, their their hand on your gun and you've got your hand on their wrist trying to stop them from actually drawing that gun, you can use your off hand to take this knife from your offside and then do what you got to do to free yourself from said scumbag. So uh, this is 1095 blade steel, uh, you know, that crow van that K-Bar does so well. And um, well, this was a gift from my brother. Uh, made in Taiwan, just a cool knife, man. This this spent a lot of time in my uh, bedside gun safe, you know, um, like if I needed to get in there and I also needed a knife and then I took it out of there. I, I thought two things. First of all, it's an extra thing in there that's sort of gun shaped. Not that I would mistake this for the pistol, but it's another thing in that in that gun safe that if I'm reaching in there, uh, I don't need to fuss with. And uh, so I just remove, and plus I got knives all over the place. I don't need to have one locked up in there. So now I just have a different, a different case altogether and it wouldn't fit this anyway. Uh, but a great, great knife, no doubt. It's small, light, great steel, very sharp and very utilitarian too. Look at this. Look at this draw cut, huh? You're, you're cutting into a box. Look at that. You don't have to worry that that point isn't center line. It's way below the knuckle line. So. Uh, good in utility as well as uh, offside weapons retention purposes. Next up, from one of my very favorite companies in the world, we discussed them earlier, Tops Knives out of Utah. Um, this one is the Rapid Strike. And it is a, mm, what should I say, uh, decidedly tactical knife. Uh, but if you get it in the single edge version, which uh, you can get it, either double edge or single edge. If you get it in the single edge, it's a great utility knife because it's small and um, I, I should say it's slender, but you, it gives you good reach. You've got like a four and a half inch blade there. And um, without that top edge sharpened, uh, it would be a fine utility knife. It also comes with um, a glass breaker on the back. It's a diamond shape. I'm sorry, a pyramidal shaped uh, protrusion. I ground it off because I got this one as a, as a concealed carry fixed blade. And if I ever actually needed it for that purpose, uh, that pointy glass breaker on the end is not comfortable. But if you want a general utility fixed blade in your knife and you want it small and in your bag and you want it small and light, you would probably want to retain that, um, that glass breaking, uh, utility there and just leave it on. Um, Awesome knife. These grooves in the handle, I put in myself. So this isn't exactly how it ships. Uh, but the Rapid Strike from Tops would make a great one. Uh, just on Thursday Night Knives the other night, someone was saying they carry this uh, as a neck knife. And for me, it's a little long uh, as a neck knife, but it's light and thin. So I totally get it. Also, it's jimped all the way around the handle. Very funny. Uh, not funny, but very cool. And uh, they don't sit proud of the scales. So when you sink the meat of your finger in there, that's when it engages. Great knife is the rapid strike. All right. Next up. Now, this one is my my EDC bag fixed blade. Um, they are still available, uh, though I, I know SOG is transitioning over to a whole new line, but you can still find these uh, you can still find these. I just don't think they're being produced now. Uh, but it's the SOG seal pup in the SOG Kydex sheath, uh, aftermarket Kydex sheath. This is what I keep in my bag. This has been in my bag for years. Um, it's very light. It's uh, I got it at Walmart for 40 bucks years ago. Uh, now you can't you can't find this at Walmart. Walmart just sucks, man, at, at least for knives in my area. They have a, a terrible selection and it's all locked behind a counter and you got to find, you know, one of the seven employees who works in that gigantic store to open it up for you. So, you know, the, the good old days are gone, but uh, this knife is very useful because it's got that uh, it's got the serrations. It's got the, the big bellied uh, Bowie shape, um, both tactical and utilitarian. You know, I know um, actual, uh, operators have used this knife 
for its overall utility. Yeah, it looks cool because it's a SOG, uh, Mac V SOG design with those double peak spine and it looks aggressive, but it's also, you know, 99% of the time being used for utility and, and really does a great job uh, at that. It's got really excellent grind. It's very, it's hollow ground and very thin and, and sharp. This is OS 8 blade steel. I know uh, for a while they were using OS 6 and it was just super soft. Um, I got this one once they made the change to OS 8. Um, and if you like the look of this, like I said, you can still find these. Uh, what I would love to get is the, is the larger seal. Oh, I can't remember what they call it. They didn't call it the seal pup, but it's this design only stretched out, uh, but they're not making that one either. Uh, check out Stog. There, some of their new fixed blades look really cool too. I have to say, uh, I'm I'm hot and cold with them. Uh, I think they had something really amazing that they kind of blew, and 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 now they're they're coming back in a different sort of hipster way. Not hipster, but I don't know, um, appealing to a, a a modern crowd. And I think, I don't know. I kind of feel like their original USP has been has been lost, but. I love that SOG seal pup. And like I said, the look of some of the new uh, fixed blades, they actually do look pretty, pretty, pretty nice. I don't know. Maybe they'll send me one and I'll get to check it out or, or, or you know, and I'm not suggesting for free. I just mean, check it out because I don't like to, to bad talk any knife company, especially ones that I have a fond, you know, history of. Okay. Next one, BPS knives. This is out of Ukraine, father and son team making knives, BRS uh, this one is, uh, did I say BRS? I'm sorry. It is BPS. I, that was a, that was a typo, but, um, this thing is, uh, let's just pull it out and show it to you. Hang on a sec. Yeah. BPS. So this is the HK five. And now we're getting into a little, little bigger here. So the first five knives were the smaller ones. Now these are a little bit larger, but they're still light and make for great bag knives. And depending on your use, you know, this is maybe not the, the most urban of knives, but uh, say you're not in an urban environment, you're still carrying a bag, you're still driving to work. Um, you still might get, you know, stop, you, you still might break down by the side of the road is what I'm getting at. And this would be a good one for that. This is uh, 1066 high carbon blade steel. That's a Scandi grind. It is incredibly sharp, incredibly sharp and very cost effect. This is a $35 knife. You've got untreated wood handles that are very nice. Uh, ergonomically, they feel great. Um, I keep saying I'm going to stain them. They're kind of, they're untreated. They're not stabilized wood. I keep thinking I'm going to stain it and I keep kind of just not staining it, but I will, I will, and it'll be a deep red. Um, but the usage of this is amazing. I did a video on, um, some of my other big fixed blades, uh, batoning wooden stuff. And, and I showed using this to carve the handle of the baton. I had a big piece of wood and I had to carve out something for me to hold an area for me to hold. And this was amazing. Uh, more a killer perhaps. Um, I don't know. I, I don't have any, um, modern Mora's. I have the old wooden handle one. And I gotta say, this is, uh, you know, this, this kind of has, has it over that Mora. Definitely a very nice knife. And I love the way it feels inexpensive and you're supporting a small business, albeit in <laughs> Ukraine. But, uh, you know, me, I like the father, son, I like the family knife stories. And this appealed to me. This leather sheath is one of the best leather sheaths in my collection. I mean, the quality of the leather is amazing. Thick, thick, stout, sturdy, yet supple. Very nice. Uh, when I got this, I first had to put this lanyard on to pull the knife out of the sheath. Uh, it got so, it was so kind of tight, but uh, it has loosened up because of that suppleness and it, it's perfect now. Okay. Next up is uh, a cold steel. You know, this list isn't gonna go down without a cold steel. This is the Coban, a long running, very, very, very popular fixed blade knife from cold steel. Uh, and part of that is because it's, it's always been about a $40 knife. I think they're creeping up like everything, uh, creeping up in price, but it's always been one of the most affordable fixed blades from Cold Steel. And it takes advantage of Cold Steel's mastery and perhaps invention of the American Tonto. You know, that 
uh, extreme faceted tip where you got that chisel tip and then you have a deeply hollow, that's not chisel ground, that's that's a flat grind, but it, it looks like a chisel. And then you have this very deeply hollow ground, um, slightly bellied uh, straight there. So just a great blade. This is OS 8, or no, this is, yeah, OS 8A. Um, but look at how thin and slender it is. It's so light and so thin that this even makes a good, uh, this is longer and bigger than I prefer to carry in my waistband, but this one just works. And that has to do with how thin it is. Very thin, very light. And despite its thinness, you still get some contouring uh, in cross section there. You got that Coke bottle style handle there. So it, it even though it's very thin, it's it fills up your hand. You feel it in your hand. You're not, um, it's not slipping away from you. Uh, you got that grippery, uh, grippy, grivery handle, uh, which is basically rubber, you know, rubberized. And you've got a, um, a finger guard of the same material. It's all one integral piece. Um, this knife, <laughs> I got, I got a, one of these for my sister years ago when she had uh, a stalker. Uh, Liz, I hope I'm not saying too much, but um, I got that for her and uh, made her feel better. And then I made her a knife and she's got that one too. So uh, not much of a knife person, my sister, uh, except when it comes to cooking at which she excels. Uh, but I got her this and uh, made her feel better. Makes me feel better when it's on my waist and or just sitting on my desk. The Cold Steel Coben does make a great bag knife due to its lightness. And, and though the Tonto is aggressive and tactical, it is also very utilitarian. The Tontos do not get enough credit for that. Uh, you do get this sort of scraping, chiseling uh, uh, utility here from that front part. You get get amazing slicing. I even think that that a Tonto might make a good outdoor knife. Now, all you outdoorsmen out there, what do you think? And and you don't have to be rude if I'm way off base, but let me know why I'm off base. Why would a Tonto be bad out in the field? Like we never see any field knives that are uh, that are that shape or or you know, woodcraft knives that shape. Okay, next up is you got to have something just like that Tonto that is light and easy to carry, but is a Bowie. And that comes from Spyderco. Oh, oh, I've always loved this knife. The Spyderco Street Bowie. When I first got it, I hated that sheath. It's like, oh, it's, it's loose. It rattles. It's got the footprint is gigantic. It looks like Rhode Island, you know? Uh, but actually... It works great because it comes out of the sheath so easily. And now there are certain times you don't want uh, a knife to be really firmly set in there. You don't want to have to tug if, if you're carrying it for self-defense. And that's what this is. This is a self-defense knife, but could no doubt with that uh, with that uh, very trail master, small trail master style blade be a great utility knife. But what I was getting at is you don't want to have to tug and like, pull your pants up and give yourself a wedgie trying to pull the knife out of the sheath. So I have, uh, you know, originally I was going to make a new Kydex sheath for this and I've just stuck with this sheath because um, it's worked so well. Um, this is designed by um, Fred Perrin, French uh, commando, really interesting guy. I had a chance to talk with him at Blade Show this past year. And um, I've always loved his signature style of, knife where the blade itself is the guard. This is a very French, traditional French design. A lot of traditional French fighting knives actually look like French cooking knives, uh, where the handle is shaped kind of like uh, a chef's knife. And the reason, and the the tang of the, I'm sorry, I'm having a mind lock here. The ricasso of the blade dipping down below the pinch point at the top of the handle is much larger so that if you're thrusting, you're not going to ride up on there. But it's not an extra piece uh, of material for a guard. It's integrated into the handle design. I've always liked that. Here you've got a whole bunch of really good jimping. You know, uh, Spyderco does amazing jimping. You have a full flat ground uh, blade of VG10 that really is nice and and thin and slicey, but it is uh, it's stout enough that I feel you could do some decent work with this. I, if you, you can see some of the coating rubbed off the front. I've been throwing this 
into, uh, I have a, well, I have a throwing target and I've used this not in a spin throw, but in a close, you know, within 10 feet, um, uh, no spin throw. So that, that looks like this. You hold it like this. Thanks to the book, Jim got me on knife throwing. Uh, you hold it like this. And when you throw it, the, your forefinger brushes the spine to sort of slow the spin. And if you're in within 10 feet, if you throw it hard enough, and this thing works great for that. So it just makes me believe that this, this is a very good and universal knife. You, you can throw it uh, effectively. You can definitely use it as a self-defense knife very effectively, that five inch Bowie, but also it's just got utility all day long. Why do you have that pink fob on there, Bob? Well, I used to carry this <clears throat> in the morning walking the dog at 5 a.m. in our wooded park. I've stopped doing that. I'm just, it's too spooky, man. It's just too spooky. Uh, not only, I just don't want anyone jumping out at me and I don't need that, but, uh, you know, cause we, uh, it's still kind of an urban area and, uh, we do have some, some gangs and such in the area, but, uh, in any case, uh, I, I put that on there so I could, uh, if I had to draw it and my hand slipped off, I could, I could grab it easily, but I, I do like uh, co the cognitive dissonance of having a, a nasty looking black Bowie with this happy teal and hot pink fob. Yes, the Fred Perrin designed Street Bowie, an awesome, awesome knife, a great bag knife. Lastly on this list, and I would love to put this in my bag, but I, I'm the, the SOG has been there, in there for so long, it's staying. But <clears throat> this is the Ritter RSK Mark III, that awesome um, fixed blade knife version of his, uh, oh, well, of the knife I was carrying for emotional support today the mini rsk mark one this is the fixed blade version and you can see the family resemblance from that blade and the handle style and the radiating milled pattern coming from that that front uh screw there awesome awesome ergonomics you've got an s45 vn blade uh, this is my only s45 vn what, what happened to s45 did that kind of just like come and come and go or come and just kind of staying quiet. I'm not sure what's, what's up with S45. I don't hear about it too much, um, but a great, great blade shape in that you have a nice long straight portion here and then a very decent belly there. You've got a center line point. So you always know where it is. If you need to use that point for say making um, some, uh, what do you call it? A divot in a piece of wood for, for doing a, for starting a fire, you know, that the bow drill kind of thing. So you, you have that line, uh, that point center line, you know where it is if you're using it for a tactical purpose, you know where that point is uh, at all times. And then uh, having it there is good for drilling because you don't have, uh, well, you get the idea. A little guard integrated into the blade itself there uh, to stop your hand from going up onto the blade. Uh, Hogue. Hogue can just make great knives. And this is nice and light. The thing about, and, and it comes with a really nice nylon sheath with Molly capability. And, uh, or I'm sorry, not Molly. I guess you could feed this through Molly loops, but uh, you can take that on and off without removing your belt. And you don't hear me say that much about nylon sheaths. Not a huge fan. Uh, but the reason I, I show this last, this is probably the most ultimate of all of these knives because. That's the whole purpose behind this knife and the mini RSK uh, Mark I. Um, Doug Ritter intended these knives to be survival knives, RSK, uh, Ritter Survival Knife. That's what RSK stands for. And so this being built for that purpose um, and, and excelling and being light and being designed by a guy who flies helicopters and, and used to make... Um, and, and makes survival kits for aviators and includes this knife. Um, yeah, I think this is probably, uh, probably the chief among uh, all of these because it's got everything. It's got uh, uh, a, a nicely uh, sized blade at one, two, three, four, five and a half inches. I'm sorry, five and a quarter inches. It's got a great blade steel in S45 VN. It's got an awesome grind in that super high, uh, flat grind because it is nice and thin 
behind the cutting edge, but does wedge out a bit. You could use it for, uh, uh, you know, kindling and that kind of thing. Um, and it's got great ergonomics and is nice and light. So of all of these, if you have the means, I highly recommend it. I'm not putting it in my bag because uh, if I were to lose it, I'd be a bit heartbroken. <laughs> uh, this one was given to me actually by um, by Doug Ritter. So uh, it has some sentimental meaning to me as well. Just a great knife, also a lanyard. These all have to have lanyard uh, attachments, uh, the bigger ones, because uh, you might need to just put some paracord on there and use it uh, in a way that you're not intending. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this journey through great EDC fixed blades for your uh, for your bag, for your EDC bag. Um, you should have one in there. There should be a fixed blade and a folder and maybe even a multi-tool or definitely a multi-tool in your bag at all times. Uh, you never know when you need the uh, robust nature of a fixed blade. And uh, to have a small light one on you is a good idea. All right. Well, be sure to join us next week for another uh, uh, look at the knife world and my knife collection. And also be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And if you want to become a patron and help support the show, you can go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.